Percy Shelley, the husband of Mary Shelley, the author of Frankenstein, rebutted many arguments for the existence of a god, and this essay, A Refutation of Deism, specifically addresses the design argument. This argument says that things perform functions, therefore an intelligence must have created them for that function, and that there is order in the universe, therefore an intelligence must have created that order. He says, Why do we admit design in any machine of human contrivance? Simply because innumerable instances of machines have having been contrived by human art, are present to our mind, because we are acquainted with persons who could construct such machines. But if, having no previous knowledge of any artificial contrivance, we had accidentally found a watch upon the ground, we should have been justified in concluding that it was a thing of nature, that it was a combination of matter with whose cause we are unacquainted, and that any attempt to account for the origin of its existence would be equally presumptuous and unsatisfactory. I've heard a lot of apologists say that it's clear that things like watches and sunglasses had a creator, as though it's inherently obvious to infer this because of their complexity rather than something we learn about. This is nonsense. If we didn't know that people made these things, we would have no rational basis on which to infer that they were the product of intelligent design. A man knows not only that he now is, but that there was a time when he did not exist. Consequently, there must have been a cause. But we can only infer from effects causes exactly adequate to those effects. There certainly is a generative power which is affected by particular instruments. We can not prove that it is inherent in these instruments, nor is the contrary hypothesis capable of demonstration. We admit that the generative power is incomprehensible, but to suppose that the same effects are produced by an eternal, omnipotent, and omniscient being leaves the cause in the same obscurity, but renders it more incomprehensible. Asserting that the universe was created by a timeless, spaceless, all-powerful, all-knowing, disembodied mind makes its origin more confusing rather than less. I admit that the nature of these laws is incomprehensible, but the hypothesis the hypothesis of a deity adds a gratuitous difficulty, which so far from alleviating those which it has adduced to explain, requires new hypothesis for the elucidation of its own inherent contradictions. Why does such a being exist? Some apologists say that a god exists because it is a platonic form, but this really only amounts to saying that god exists because, well, he just does. It is manifest that if the eye could not see, nor the stomach digest, the human frame could not preserve its present mode of existence. It is equally certain, however, that the elements of its composition, if they did not exist in one form, must exist in another, and that the combinations which they would form must, so long as they endured, derive support for their particular mode of being from their fitness to the circumstances of their situation. It by no means follows that because a being exists performing certain functions, he was fitted by another being to the performance of these functions. That certain animals exist in certain climates results from the constantineity of their frames to the circumstances of their situation. Let these circumstances be altered to a sufficient degree, and the elements of their composition must exist in some new combination no less resulting than the former from those inevitable laws by which the universe is governed. While these passages seem quite Darwinian, this essay was published when Darwin was only five years old. Adaptation and natural selection were ideas that even Aristotle had. Even before The Origin of Species was published, it was clear that the complexity of biological organisms did not require a designer. Order and disorder are no more than modifications of our own perceptions of the relations which subsist between ourselves and external objects. And if we are justified in inferring the operation of a benevolent power from the advantages attended on the former, the evils of the latter bear equal testimony to the activity of a malignant principle. No less pertination in inducing evil out of good than the other is unremitting in procuring good from evil. Why do we need to account for order rather than disorder? Why assume that disorder is the default state of reality? Intelligence is that attribute of the deity which you hold to be most apparent in the universe. Intelligence is only known to us as a mode of animal being. We cannot conceive intelligence distinct from sensation and perception, which are attributes to organized bodies. To assert that God is intelligent is to assert that he has ideas, and Locke has proved that ideas result from sensation. Sensation can only exist in an organized body, and organized body is necessarily limited both in extent and operation. I don't think the assertion that ideas result from sensation is still considered correct, but what does it mean to say that ideas can exist without a brain of some kind? How can ideas occur in a timeless, spaceless being. 